Wassalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to know uh, why is polygamy allowed in Islam? Sister has a question that why is polygamy allowed in Islam? Polygamy normally is of two types. A person having more than one spouse. So if a man has more than one spouse, it's called as polygyny. And if a woman has more than one spouse, one husband, it is called as polyandry. So Islam allows polygyny, limited polygyny, a man to have more than one wife as compared polyandry is prohibited. But before I give the answer, I will tell you that Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth. We say marry only one. If you analyze the other religions, Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, you can marry as many as you wish. If you read the Ramayana, the father of Sri Ram, King Dashrat, he had three wives. If you read Mahabharat, Sri Krishna, how many wives he had? Four, ten, hundred, thousand, sixteen thousand one hundred and eight. So if Krishna can have sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives, so why can't the Muslims have up to four? Furthermore, if you read the Bible, if you read the Old Testament, Abraham, according to the Bible, had three wives. Solomon had 700 wives. So according to the Bible and according to Judaism and Christianity, man can have as many wives as he pleases. It is later on, the Jewish rabbi, Ben Shingen Yehuda, he passed a synoid in 690 C to 1060 C that a Jewish man should marry only one. And this practice of Jewish men marrying more than one wife continued even in Sephardic communities that the Jewish community living in Muslim society till as late as 1950, until the chief rabbi of Israel, he passed a synoid and said that a Jew is only allowed to marry only one woman. Similarly, if you read the Bible, a Christian can marry as many women as he wishes. It is the church which has put a ban that the Christian should marry only one. Similarly, according to Hindu scriptures, the Hindu can marry as many women as he wishes. It is the Indian Penal Code, the Indian government, under the Hindu Special Marriage Act in 1954, where it's put a limitation that Hindu man can only marry one woman. Otherwise, according to scriptures, you can marry as many as you wish. And if you read the statistics of the government of India, the state of the woman in India, on page number 66, it says it gives the percentage of polygamous marriage is done in a span of 10 years, from 1951 to 1961, and Muslims, they were involved in 4.31% polygamous marriages. And the Hindus, 5.04%. That means 0.75% of the Hindus, they do more polygamous marriages as compared to the Muslims. Now let us analyze what does the Quran say. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. So this statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other religious scripture. Let me tell you that polygyny, a man having more than one wife, is not compulsory in Islam. It is muba, it's optional. Many people have misconception, it is compulsory. It's not compulsory, it is muba, it's optional. But if you marry more than one wife, the Quran says you should be just between them. If you cannot do justice, then you should not marry. So one of the criteria for a man to have more than one wife is you should do justice between your wives. Let us analyze what are the logical reasons that Islam has permitted a man in Islam to have more than one wife. Science Twitter tells us that by nature, male and female children are born in equal proportion. But a child's doctor, he will tell you that the female child can fight the germs and diseases much better than the male child. The female child has got more immunity medically the female child is stronger than the male child. So in the pediatric age itself, in the young age, there are more male children dying as compared to female children. So in pediatric age itself, there are more females in the world than males. As life goes on, there is death due to cigarette smoking, due to alcoholism, due to accidents, during wars. More males are dying in these conditions as compared to females. So what we realize that today in the world, there are more females as compared to males. Only in third world countries like India, etc., the female population is less than the male population. And one of the reasons is that there is female feticide and infanticide in India. According to a BBC report that came in the program assignment by the title Let Her Die, a British reporter by the name of Emily Beckinen, she gives a survey that every day 
more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted after the identified that they're females. If you multiply this figure by 365 the number of days, you get a total of more than a million fetuses are being aborted every year in India after the identified that they're females. And if you stop this evil practice, inshallah, even in India, the female population will become more than the male population. So if you analyze today in the world, besides third world countries, there is more females as compared to males. In New York alone, there are 1 million females more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million females more than males. In Germany alone, there are 5 million females more than males. In UK alone, there are 4 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there are 9 million females more than males. And God alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows how many millions of females are more than the males throughout the world. If I agree with the non-Muslim that every man should have only one wife, and if the market is saturated, every man has found a wife for himself, and suppose your sister, or suppose my sister happens to live in America, and if the market is saturated, all the men have found a life partner for themselves. So yet there will be 7.8 million females in USA who will not find husbands. Now the only option remaining for these 7.8 million females who have not found husband, life partner for themselves, is that they either marry a man who's already married or they become public property. Public property, such a harsh word. You know, it is the most offensive word I can use. There's no better word I can use. Therefore, I call it that either have the choice of marrying a man who already has a wife or becoming public property. If you analyze in the Western world, especially in America, on average, a person, before he settles down with a life partner for good, he has, on an average, eight sexual different life partners before he settles down with one. That's what the survey says. And after marriage, how many has is not mentioned in the survey? On an average, eight. Imagine. And there in America, having mistress is common. Two, four, ten, twenty thousand, no problem. But having more than one wife legally, it doesn't go down their throat. And I do agree that no woman, no girl, would, under normal circumstances, like to share the husband. That is without doubt. But the Islamic Sharia says that let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. That means if it is a good Muslim woman who knows the situation of the world, she would not mind sharing the husband for the benefit of the other Muslim sister. So these are the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, has permitted some men to have more than one wife and up to four wives. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother.